recent times, a lot of hype has been placed on the role of drones in modern combat operations. Events in Saudi Arabia, Syria and the Caucasus have prompted the observers to declare that a new type of air power has arisen and it has shown its potential. Well, if indeed it is air power, it's not new and the potential was well known. So let's start from the drone itself. Um, the lack of pilot replaced by remote guidance systems is a factor for cost reduction, but not as much as it may seem. Removing the pilot is not going to make the drone cost a fraction of the equivalent piloted plane. The cost reduction may be estimated between 10 and 50%. The percentage depends from the incidence of the cockpit and all the system connected with the pilot, on the total of the aircraft. On a fourth or fifth generation jet, it is relatively small. On the equivalent of a Super Tucano, is much higher. The cost of the drone actually is mainly driven by its capabilities. Projects like the Skyborg or the Loyal Wingman will produce, should they produce anything, some sort of scaled down high performance jets. A supersonic relaxed ability drone with systems similar to a piloted aircraft. They will not be much cheaper since most of the cost elements are still there, albeit smaller. The cost will still be in the tens of millions of value high enough to make the whole a treatable concept, say, relative. Sure, the cost per flight hour will be lower than an equivalent manned aircraft, but it will not be the decisive cost reduction being sold from some outlets. If they do not replace manned jets in some of their tasks, they will actually increase the overall cost of the air power. Additionally, what is essential for our story is that these weapons will still be out of reach for many minor players that can't afford more than a handful of legacy manned jets. However, things change if we scale down one notch and we get into the realm of light attack. Light attack is the type of mission conducted by planes like the combat versions of jet trainers, the AMX or some more modern turboprops specifically equipped for the mission like Super Tucano, which is a reference for the category. In this case, and for this specific mission, drones can be even more effective than a manned platform at a lower cost. While the American MQ-9 is still as expensive as a Super Tucano, other manufacturers like Turkey, Iran, Russia and Israel today produce lighter platforms with light attack capability for less than half the price, even if some critical components are often sourced abroad. What has been seen at work in 2020 is light attack with precision weapons, and there's no point in denying that this class of weapons has scored some relevant successes. However, none of the capabilities demonstrated was unknown and unexpected. And among the known and expected capability, there wasn't the, the ability to defend themselves effectively from any serious form of contrast. What should be the ideal form of contrast? We will see in a bit, but these drones prove to be rather vulnerable. Anyway, we are not over yet because if we scale down a notch again, we enter the realm of tactical drones whose diffusion is steadily increasing. Commercial quadcopters have been in use in Ukraine. Uh, the United States Marines are building squads and platoons around small reconnaissance drones and military versions of civilian designs are actually proliferating. This is something really unprecedented in ground operations. We are approaching an era when the tactical commanders on the battlefield at platoon and company level may have an unprecedented situational awareness. Every platoon may literally have a dozen or small drones of various types, not much difference from civilian models that can be used to look around the corner or on the other side of the hill, all for a relatively modest cost. Larger tactical drones like quadcopters can also carry small explosive devices or light automatic weapons and they can be used to apply force from an unexpected direction. Being hidden behind a wall, maybe no longer being hidden. 
tactical drones are already having a huge impact on the tactics. For example, dispersion and camouflage are becoming more important even at tactical level. Quick movement may be another measure to reduce the opponent's situational awareness. In a few years we might end up in confrontation where light drones become the main asset for the infantry platoon or company commander because they will be able to apply the same volume of fire and provide the same level of intelligence as individual soldiers. Soldiers won't go away, they will be there to pilot the drones and definitely there are some tasks on the battlefield that can't be mechanized. Defending from the unmanned version of a high-performance jet requires assets not much different than those required for a manned one. We are in the same category, air-to-air -air missiles, surface-to-air missiles, the same jamming equipment already in use. And this is obvious because these drones have similar performance and features as the manned aircraft. The same performance and features the weapons I mentioned before are designed to counter. Critically, the weapons are still less expensive overall than the targets and this makes the whole kill chain viable. If we move down a notch like we did before, we get in an area where the situation is not so clear cut. Drones of the class of the Reaper or a bit lower can still be attacked with classic air-to-air -air or surface-to-air weapons and indeed they are very vulnerable as we have already said. Their only protection is their relatively low radar signature due to their size and the possibility to introduce some basic stealth measure. The engines, either turboprop, piston or jet, tend to be relatively cold for the class so even the infrared signature is quite small. If they're spotted though, they have no real defense against a missile or a AAA system. However, maintaining a constant air superiority near the front line may be a taxing additional task and a dangerous one for conventional fighters, particularly for the same minor players that are more likely to implement their air power on drones rather than planes. In the same way, the density of surface-to-air weapons or jammers required to fend off a coordinated drone force may be rather high and beyond the reach of the same minor players. This is the reason why we have seen so many successful drones operations in the last few years. The opponent was missing the air-to-air -air or the surface-to-air capability required to shoot them down, while the same capability would be there and given for granted in a clash among major players. At this level, the cost of the weapons that will be employed to defend from these drones is approaching the cost of the drones themselves, making the whole proposition a bit more shaky. Russia and China have been aware of this problem introducing systems actually designed with the contrast of drones in mind. An example is the Panzer. The Panzer is a short to medium range system that uses very cheap missiles and 30mm autocannons together with a radar that is tuned to detect even small drones without too many false positives. In its performance it had highs and lows but the direction is the right one. Even the Chinese are introducing simple truck vehicles with autocannons likely aimed to engage low flying drones. The situation is even more intricate if we move down a notch again and we consider tactical drones. These systems are difficult to engage because they are cheap enough to justify only basically light weapons or small caliber autocannon reactions, but they are also small moving targets, very difficult to hit with kinetic weapons if not assisted by a fire control system. This situation produced anomalies like what happened in 2017 in southern Saudi Arabia when a Patriot missile worth about 3 million was fired at a quadcopter. It seems that the industry is actually orienting toward light jammers that could be mounted on a light wheel vehicle to counter the tactical drone menace, but these systems are still few and relatively young. However, jammers are important because the drone communication channels are one of their main vulnerabilities. From this point of view, jammers are only going to proliferate. Um, one country that is already ahead in the race is Russia, and because they already have a system that is considered to be quite effective, jammers also have an advantage against one feature of drones that has not been really demonstrated yet, but it could be an important improvement in the future.
forming is the possibility to use a large number of small and inexpensive drones in a cooperative way. That is, the drones communicate with each other and optimize their action to reach the objective. The algorithms and the mathematics behind the concept are really solid and the implementation is just a matter of time. The operator in this case won't control the single drone but the entire swarm. It is not clear yet what the potential of swarming is, but there are some use cases that do show why there are several researches ongoing. For example, to attack a pantsuit system like the one we mentioned before, a swarm of 15 or 20 small drones could be used, each carrying the equivalent of a hand grenade or a RPG warhead. Each drone coordinated with the others to attack from around the clock making it very difficult for a computer to establish the priority of the targets to engage. Another example would be the same swarm attacking a group of vehicles and coordinating to be sure of hitting every vehicle no more than a couple of times, avoiding overkills. While at this point it seems that we are moving toward a dystopic science fiction film, so maybe it is better if I stop here. But if you like this video, I'm sure you are going to like the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you could consider supporting the channel on Subscribestar or Patreon, you will have my gratitude forever. In the meanwhile, thank you very very much for watching, stay safe and see you next time.